Hi everyone, welcome to Invent Your Mind. Thank you for joining me. My name is Gayani. And if you have joined me before, you know I'm an attorney. And if you haven't, welcome. Um, I do intellectual property and business law. I mostly work with um, small businesses, businesses and startups and uh, entrepreneurs. And this channel is about bringing information about other entrepreneurs, startups and other businesses, kind of connecting uh, dots and sharing knowledge. So today I have a guest, Kriti Bindal. Bindal? Sorry, Kriti, <laughs> I butchered your last name. Yeah. Um, uh, she is actually, uh, uh, she's an owner of the Oroka Biosciences. She has a, um, you know, master's degree from University of Texas in immunology. Then she got her PhD from University of Texas, MD Anderson Cancer Center um, in cancer biology. And then um, she went on to get an MBA from University of San Diego, Brady School of Management. So she have an amazing background. She had been with several big companies and then she launched her own uh, com uh, company. So I was really excited to have her join us today. And um, as always, just a little disclaimer that, you know, because I'm an attorney, I had to put a disclaimer. So uh, if this is for informational purposes only. If you have any specific questions, I will put the information below to connect with us and um, connect with Preeti. If you would like to, I will put that information below. And thank you for joining. So Preeti, welcome. Thank you for joining me. And I'm sorry I mis mispronounced your na uh, last name, if you could say it correctly. Yes. Yeah, you know, actually, actually, you got it uh, pretty close. Kriti Bindal and uh, Gayani, thank you for having me today. Um, so, um, you know, you have a really unique background in the sense because you really are a business owner. Like, did you decide to go get the MBA after, like, you knew that you're going to be launching a business just out of curiosity? Um, so I, I had been thinking about getting an MBA for a long time while, uh, while I was in industry. Uh, the, I think the idea of starting my own business probably was while I was in, in my MBA Program. I uh, definitely just through the environment. Um, I got the entrepreneurial bug, the idea in my head. Um, so I mean, I think my my training definitely fostered that. So um, yeah, I, I'm sorry I jumped around a little bit here, but let me um, ask you what? Why did you get a, you know why did you do what you did like with the PhD of cancer biology? and talk about a little bit of your background and then we could go into the other things. Yeah, so um, while I was, I actually started um, my master's program in immunology. During that time, um, I also started an internship at Alpine. I was kind of, um, in the lab doing my master's program during the day and then um, you know, a few days a week I would work at Alcon on site um, to kind of get that industry experience. I was working in scientific marketing. Um, and I think I, I really decided then that I love being in the pharmaceutical industry. I like being part of uh, development and um, really wanted to pursue that. Um, another piece is that I've always loved writing. Um, and so marrying science and writing together, I, I, I knew that was kind of my, my need. Um, I kind of did the same thing. Well, I, you know, I went on um, to MD Anderson in Houston to do my PhD and um, did a similar thing um, after the first year of my PhD program while I was in graduate school. I continued to do industry internships. Um, I continued to Alcon for, for some time remotely and then also work for other companies in Houston. So um, kind of did that alongside and um, you can read the your um, mic is going in and out a little bit. It's okay. a, um, like it's most of the time, like 80% of the time I could hear you and then you fade off a little, a little bit at toward the end, like right there. Let me try to put the mic a little bit closer. See, like that's much better. Okay, good. And, uh, it's, it's closer to it, so that should help. Yeah, 
I just uh, didn't want to disrupt the flow either. But so I was like, yeah. because, you know, I think right now there's a lot of people online. So I think the, there are some, some bandwidth issues for everybody. So we're going to keep going unless it freezes. So. Okay. Okay. No problem. Good. Um, so you were talking about your, um, while you were doing your PhD, you, um, you did some uh, internships? Yeah, so um, I did um, basically with some startups in Houston um, and worked with um, multiple different companies over there. And I, I always found myself, even during those internships, going into the regulatory path. Um, though those were pretty broad internships when you're at a startup, mm -hmm. they you know, across many different functions. Um, but I always found myself down that path. So um, for those who may not be um, exactly familiar with regulatory part in a company, can you kind of give us an explanation as to what that is and how that is different from other areas in a company in a biopharma? Sure, yeah. So in biopharma, um, when we're talking about, and, and my path is really in the regulatory medical writing realm, um, so we're talking about if you're at an early stage, you have um, IND development and submission of an IND. So putting that entire package together, including non-clinical data, um, what your clinical study plan like for the IND, um, that's what that's what um, my expertise is in. And what then, is the IND, by the way? I <laughs> just figured. <I>, uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, your investigational new drug application. So prior to, to entering clinical studies, um, this needs to be submitted to regulatory agencies. It needs to be approved prior to beginning clinical studies. Um, so in addition, um, with a regulatory writing function within a company would also work through several clinical stages. So once you file that IND, um, all of the um, different phases of clinical trials, um, all of the correspondence that occurs with the FDA or EMA or any other regulatory agency, um, up till the point where you submit your marketing application, so that's for getting a final drug approval, um, mm -hmm. that's called a, um, an NDA um, or an MAA in Europe, um, that whole entire path is typically um, by the regulatory medical function. Wow. So that's, uh, um, you know, I, I mean, when I was at um, Biopharma in-house, I know that the regulatory always have a, it's a little separate from the other department. So, and it's a very important part of a company, especially because that's what you are striving for, to create a product that you could get to the consumers and, you know, go through the regulatory passages. So, um, so tell me what inspired you to launch your own, like you kind of alluded to it about the many MBA program, but. Yeah, so, um, you know, I've, I've worked with a lot of uh, pharmaceutical companies um, and have had different management roles. Um, and last year I decided to go on my own. Um, start my own team. Um, we have a team, uh, we're all scientists primarily, um, where we started out from, but lots of expertise in, in regulatory writing. Um, and it's, it, I think my MBA kind of fueled my passion to do this, and um, I embarked on it last year. So now, um, that process of launching your own practice and um, you know, creating, um, you know, having a run a business now, how do you find it? Um, is it like, obviously you like it <laughs> because, uh, you know, I think uh, you had to enjoy it. Right. So what are some of the things that you have came across and, you know, what you find that is fun and what you find challenging? Sure. Yeah. So I, I would, I, I would say the best word to use for it is, thrilling <laughs> it uh you know there's there's a new challenge that comes at you every single day um it's never it's never a mundane boring day um <laughs> i can say that for sure. um and and i love that it just has different aspects to it there's the scientific aspect um the the regulatory you know tech, technical aspect of it and then there's 
just things in maintaining an office. There's accounting. Um, there's, of course, we, we get um, help from very, um, you know, people that have a lot of expertise from, you know, legal, accounting, everything. Um, and it's just like any other position you would have, it's highly collaborative. Um, and I, I just, I love that. So uh, what would be some tips you would like to share with like um, people who are going into thinking about doing a startup or entrepreneurs, what you would, you know, like advice you would share? Um, I, I would definitely say push on, <laughs> push on for sure. There, especially, you know, when you're starting out there, there will be challenges that come at you from different angles and, uh, more than, more than anything, just push on. Do you have, um, with that kind of advice, um, do you, did you have a, like a business plan? Did you put together before you launch? Oh, it kind of organically kind of came together. What, <laughs> what was the process was kind of like for putting together this campaign for medical writing and regulatory submissions? So I don't know what my professors at Rady School of Management would uh, say about this, but um, you know we're we're always taught to start out with a business plan. Mm -hmm. I had kind of more of a back of the napkin approach. <laughs> <laughs> ideas I had it in my head um, but it's kind of a combination I would say <laughs> I see and how did you decide on the name for your business yeah um, so Aroga is actually stemmed from a Sanskrit word okay. um, a rogue means uh, free of disease oh, and okay. I think that's perfect because it, you know this is what we strive for we're working with um, our clients to to help to find uh, treatments for disease. And um, that's really cool because I knew there must be a name, a name and I don't um, know Sanskrit, so that's something I learned today. <laughs> so um, I was wondering, so with the COVID-19, how are you handling that with your company, um, the shelter in place? Because we are in California, so we are all kind of, you know, had yeah. to shelter in place. I mean, a lot of bioscience people, biopharma is obviously essential, but if you can do things remotely, obviously that's the best way to do it. So I wanted to see what the approach your company is taking. Yeah, so I, I think we're lucky enough that regulatory medical writing from the get-go can, can be done remotely. Um, we, we constantly have video conferences. We have video conferences with our clients. And I think that's what um, biotech and pharma, you know, in California and across the country, I would think, um, they're, they're taking that approach. Um, one of the things that our company has been doing is helping by volunteering with the community. Um, we're trying to help any way we can with the COVID-19 efforts by uh, reviewing articles. So with our scientific backgrounds, um, there, there's a need for reviewers to mm -hmm. uh, jump in, provide um, expertise, because right now we're, we're in an information overload. Yeah. Um, so there, there's definitely a need in that community. And for the scientists out there, I would highly encourage um, helping out with them. So how do you find those opportunities for people who might be interested, may not have looked into it? Yeah, so um, there's actually a, a scientific platform. And if you go to the bio website, um, oh, okay. the bio organization, they have many different opportunity postings for, for you to jump in. Okay, I will put that information below too. And uh, any of the things we discuss here today and how to connect with Kriti, I will put it below. So, you know, um, and I, let me ask you as far as business development, how, um, what have you found to be like a good, uh, what you find that is, you know, you that is, you know, efficient, like the most best way to do it versus, um, you know, things that you kind of may have to change tactics now with COVID-19. 
Yeah, okay. So, I mean, I, I think largely it's based on um, network connections um, that, you know, already already exist. I think the big change right now is the conferences. We, we were to go to many conferences to exhibit uh, for, for meetings and, of course, you know, that, that is on a pause. Um, I think there's some great opportunities out there, though, with the virtual conferences that are going on to connect. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, you know, social media platforms are out there, too. And, it, and it's a work in progress. I mean, we're learning every day uh, how to navigate through this as a, you know, as a <laughs> right now. Um, but yeah, I think you got to be creative during these times. Yeah, absolutely. So. I think with that, I think that's a good, you know, set of information. Thank you for sharing what you do and about Aroga Biosciences, especially in the field you're in, you know, right now, that's just, there's a lot of things going on, fast moving, and, you know, we are all rooting for biopharma to kind of come together to, you know, come up with some vaccines and treatments because honestly we won't get back to normal until those things are fully in place so you um one last question actually um I have last question that is uh, I close up but I just thought of something uh, as far as FDA submissions how do you find that right now are they uh, focusing mostly on the COVID-19 and everything else kind of have slowed down do you have any um, thoughts on that um, so my experience so far has been everything is rolling. Uh, I think the regulatory agencies have been extremely active right now, even considering everything they're working on with COVID-19. So mm -hmm. um, things, things have been moving. I mean, granted, I know there are challenges running clinical trials, and they're definitely working on approaches to that right now. Yeah. But the regulatory aspect, you know, I don't think anything and um, so this is the close-up question I usually ask people. Um, what do you do for like mindfulness and your daily kind of practice that you keep to keep it to, you know, grounded and centered yes. and sane? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I'm not sure if, you know, the people who know me, if many people know this about me, but I'm actually a, a dancer, a classical dancer. Oh, I did not know that. That's super but, cool. But my entire life, that has been my respite. Um, yeah. I, and I actually continue to do that via Zoom once a week. Um, that, that definitely is my relaxation point. Oh, wow. Do you have a group that you join for the Zoom dancing? Is that it? Oh, yes, we do have a group. Oh, yes. that's, that's really cool. Well, I'm really grateful you joined me today to talk about your company, what you do, and give some advice to um, entrepreneurs and startups out there and share what, um, you know, what Aroga is about. Thank you, uh, Kriti, for joining me. Thank you again for having me. And thank you for joining us today for this interview. Um, you know, I'm going to keep trying to bring in interviews with some um interesting people that I find, uh, you know, their paths are different and have done. So keep eye out for the video series and until next time, bye.